Hi, welcome to the show, everyone. This is Super Fun Awesome Happy Time Pedal Show. I'm Alex. And I'm Kapoor. Yeah, we're going to check out the Zoom G11 today. Yes, multi-effect processor mm, pedal. Excellent. Hey, we're going to check out a bit of an overview, maybe build some sounds from scratch and show you what's going on under the hood. Exactly. But if you hit like and subscribe on the video, give us a thumbs up and ding the notification bell. That'd be bloody ace. That'd be dandy. That what he said. <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, overview. This is yeah. the thing, it's all so carbon first, fiber. First of all, big thank you to the awesome people at uh, Zoom Australia for sending this out. Thanks, guys. Um, so it's basically their take, Zoom's take on the world of sort of Helix and mm. Axe Effects, that sort of stuff. So I think it's mainly geared towards being um, an amp and effects all in one thing as maybe less a multi effects thing that goes into amps you can do that too but i think it's mostly geared as being a, a, a everything in one solution with built-in amp simulation cabinet simulation and all that sort of stuff that's the deal okay so uh let's have a quick look basically at all the ins and outs in the back and i'm going to get my ipad out for this so i don't have to lean over and there'll be a beautiful beautiful looking picture flying across right now so in the back, we have an input jack for the guitar. We have an auxiliary in, which is a, um, like a little headphone jack thing, which is for if you want to plug in an iPad or your laptop or anything like that to jam along with, which in the effects chain, it goes after everything. So it doesn't go through any, any effects or any simulation. Then you have two effects loops, uh, send return, send return, which can use as two mono effects loops or one stereo effects loop, which you can insert anywhere in the effects chain. Uh, so if you have a I don't know, favorite drive, favorite delay, reverb, you can kind of insert that and bring it in and out whenever you want. Uh, you have the output jacks. You have, um, uh, uh, if you're running mono, you have a mono or uh, uh, mono or stereo uh, two phono jacks. You have a master volume control in the back, which also works for your headphones, in a, which is also in the back there. You have a control in, which we'll get into later. You have MIDI in and out, uh, which is MIDI in and out. You have a remote connector, which uh, you can buy uh, an accessory, which you plug into that, which then uh, gives you Bluetooth connectivity, so you can control it via an iPad or a phone for a live situation. You have a USB-C input, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool, because uh, it's also an audio interface that you can use it as. Uh, or you can connect it to your computer with that um, and use their G Lab. Is it G Lab? Guitar Lab? I think that's what it's called. Software. Um, and control it via that. You also have another a standard USB uh, port for um, uh, USB drives that you can plug into it for firmware updates or to um, install extra IRs, third party IRs, and that sort of stuff. And in a power, in a power switch. So that's all the ins and outs in the back. Now, on top, one of the things I really like about this, yeah. uh, which I think is a little bit different to a lot of the other... So is it the carbon fiber? Yes, the carbon... Oh, it's, it's all carbon fiber. And it's real carbon fiber. Look, <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it does look a little cheesy to me, but I mean, yeah, uh, anyway. Um, one thing I really like is this. So you have a mm. dedicated thing for your amplifier. So you have gain, bass, middle, treble, presence, and volume and it tells you here which amplifier it is, and it's dedicated for that all the time. They're um, endless rotary encoders, which have a, a little red thing on there, so it, it yeah. you know, it, so depending if you change presets, it automatically changes with it. Yeah, in real time, you can any time just grab an EQ control and adjust it, and you can see exactly where it is. Yeah, no menu diving, no nothing, so it's, it's yeah. right there, it's always there, and it's always dedicated for the amps, so you don't have to do anything, you don't have to set anything up, it's, that's just for your amps. Then you have these five stomp boxes, which I kind of like that as well. So mm. if you add stomp boxes like distortions or, I don't know, delays or whatever to your effects chain, these kind of become each pedal uh, with dedicated knobs for each pedal and a screen that tells you what each knob does. Um, there's also the scroll function, which we'll get into later if you run out of space. Uh, but so basically you have those, uh, the colors, uh, there's also colors that change depending on what um, effects type it is. Similar to, I guess, what Helix and Line 6 did. Yep. Um, uh, so you know from distance what uh, what um, effects type it is. And then you have this second set of um, buttons down the bottom, which a little sadly are plastic, but they feel quite sturdy. Oh, and I just scrolled... Uh, see, well, I just scrolled through different patches. Um, 
they can see the different colors, right? So we went, I wanted to go to an empty patch. There's, there's an empty patch. Um, with these, you can scroll. They have secondary functions, like for the loop where you've got record and play and stop. Uh, you go through different patches, you go through different banks, but then it also can bring in other functions which you will see on the screen. I do like the hold for tap thing on this on the yep. front, so you can always grab your yep. tap tuner. And hold for tuner. So if you hold that one down, it always goes to your tuner. You press it again, it goes away. And that you hold for tap, and then it'll start flashing. You'll see the, the light flashing. That's handy uh, to have any time. Yeah. yeah. And you also have the um, an expression pedal up the front here, which you can assign to pretty much anything you want. Sweet. Whew. So that's the overview. Now, well, f well, first part of the overview. Next thing is the screen, which is a touch screen. Some and it's quite, there's quite a lot of stuff you can do. So. Um, this video, there's going to be a lot of talking, but then we'll, there's timestamps down the bottom, so if you want to skip ahead. Um, uh, oh, and also, I should also mention, if there's any particular parts of the G11 you want us to look at, leave a comment below. Uh, today, it's sort of an overview, and we're going to be looking at making a couple of patches from scratch. Uh, and I would really like to, at some stage, do a video just on the different amps uh, that are in there, and also their cabinets, internal cabinets, and third-party IRs. So there'll be a video on that, but if there's anything else specifically you want us to do, leave a comment below and we might just do a video on it. Okay, so now, again, lots of talking, but uh, the touchscreen. So it's a touchscreen. This is basically kind of like the menu. And here you can do a whole bunch of different stuff. So I, I kind of, let's just quickly go through it. So for example, if I go back to a patch that has, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Down here. Okay, so this has got stuff in it, right? So things start lighting up. If you go play by patch memory, if you click on that, it tells you what each patch is. And mm -hmm. as you scroll through it, it changes, you know, so you know cool. the name of the patch, right? So that's one way you can look at it. Set up your set list. Yeah, yeah. And, and every time you have that little thing at the top, if you swipe down, it goes back to this. Then you can also set it to play by effects board. So now it shows you the effects board, right? So it shows you what all the effects are, so you can see what's there makes it maybe a little bit easier to turn things on and off, right? So that's another view you can choose. The other view is bank. Now, if you choose to play by bank, right, you have this bank up and down here where you can scroll up and down between the different banks. And in these buttons down the bottom, it's sort of fairly self-explanatory if you look at this. If you click on that, you go to extra lid. Uh, that's your sequencer. You know, so you can click through patches. So for example, if you set it up in a way where you have maybe, I don't know, a uh, intro, verse, chorus, bridge, or solo, mm. something like that. You can have it set up, each bank is a song, and then you can have four different banks, four different sure. patches per bank for four different parts, or whichever way you want to look at it. Really, Just re to, really good if you're doing like effects heavy music, like pop stuff yeah. or EDM yeah. based stuff. And then mm. with each of those, you still have full access to these, right? So mm. within that, you can turn, if you want that drive on or off, you can turn it on or off. But you basically have quick access to full banks. So that's another view, right? Then, so these are the three different types of views you can have. Then below it, you have uh, rhythm. So for example, you can set up an emo pattern uh, in this case. And now, again, it can, it's sort of self, I hope you can kind of see it in, this, in here, but um, it shows us this becomes play, this becomes stop. So if I press play, that becomes your emo drum pattern. It kind of shows you the bars up here. Yeah, I feel sad already. <laughs> For, yeah. So, um, <laughs> Oh, there, there is, um, if you didn't notice, no, uh, mention this, there is a full drum machine in it. Full drum machine in it, yeah. And you click so. on a pattern, and then uh, and then there's all these different patterns. So mm. you've got, you know, you can do funk one. Or you can do 70s soul. So you can select, there's tons of different ones. Um, and you can you can change the BPM. You can via MIDI. You can beat sync it. All that sort of stuff. You have a separate volume uh, control for the drums. So you can set it in a certain way for um, for the rest of the song. Um, so that's another thing. So you've got the rhythm side of things. Then you have the looper. Now the looper again very self-explanatory. Those two buttons become that becomes record and play, and that's your stop. Uh, you can also go into looper settings where you have you can have a looper pre effects or post effects. So post effects meaning if you record a bit with, for example, it has a really big reverb on it, it will record that reverb on it. You can, as you're playing in the as you in the looper, you can actually change patches. So up here, so you can record, for example, that Y98 sequencer sound is the one you want to record the bass loop on. 
and then for the lead bit you want to skip to this to the pl plex disk <laughs> um, and this is where so this is for example where pre and post effects it you, you you can assign where you want it to be if you put a pre effect as you change patches the sound will change with the patches if you put it post effects it will record the effect and as you change patches it won't affect the bass loop and stuff like that uh, so there's a whole bunch of different settings you also with stop you can have if you press stop it instantly stops finish means it goes to the end of the loop or fade out means it gradually fades out so there's a whole bunch of different things you can do you also have undo functions which you can add to it that's the looper we're getting to it uh, tuner now the tuner you can always get to by holding this but you can also get through it uh, through that uh, you have two different views you've got one that's kind of almost strobe tuner-ish and the other one is just a normal uh, tuner view you can also click on uh, chromatic you can have it so there's that thing where it says chromatic if you click on that uh, you can set it to just have guitar, so it just gives you, you know, 1E, 2B, and so on. You can set it to open tunings, you can set it to dadgad, you can set it to flats, you can set it to 440 hertz, so you can calibrate it differently if you believe in certain vibrations are better than others. Um, or, I found this out, if you're playing with a Balinese Gamlin group, they're slightly off. Like, I think they tune to like F or F sharp, but it's slightly flat. Okay. Well, you can, or if you if you want to, if you want to um, <laughs> yeah. play along to the Abbey Road um, Beatles piano because I remember oh. it's not quite in tune and they yeah. always tune it like that now. Anyway, yeah, sure. uh, so you can set it to that. Uh, okay, then you can create memory patch. So this is what basically it gives you almost like a preset -y kind of thing and you click on it and you can add different, you know, so it's basically almost like a template um, for uh, starting a new preset. You can change the effects order. Uh, there's no, no effects at the moment, but so for example, if we go to oh, the other way. There you go. Change the effects order. You want that delay to be first. You just click on it and drag it to wherever you want it to be. And then the delay is wherever you want it to be. There's also, there's an auto save function, which you can also turn off, uh, which just means if you, um, it will, if you do a change, it will automatically save it. Uh, but I you can turn a, it. I think that's a good idea. It's not a bad thing, yeah. But just be conscious it's there. It, yeah, you can turn it off. So then next time you will go to the preset, it'll be back to wherever it was when you saved it. Yep. Uh, change amp and effect. So that basically means you click on any of these. So you want that Polex amp, and then it gives you the list of all the other amps that you can use. Uh, one thing I kind of like is it shows you how much of down the bottom. And again, I don't know if you can necessarily read it properly, but down the bottom it tells you this particular patch uses 47% of the processor and how much percentage of the processor each amp uses. So for example, that seventh heaven amp or Polex is quite um, heavy on the on the usage for the, C, uh, the CPU power. But then if you use the MS800, it's like half that almost. So it shows you, it gives you kind of feedback on what you're using as you're using it. Um, so that's the first page. <laughs> Only two more to go. Um, you can add effects, you can delete effects. It's fairly, fairly um, straightforward. Edit patch settings. So patch settings, you can have basically settings per patch where you can change things like the MIDI channel, command. So command, you can actually do things where it switches things for you or you can have switcher that uses things within here. Uh, we might do a whole video of that at some stage. Uh, you can edit the amp, amp, you can use send and return. So you can set up a send and return. Um, so for example, there's, is that the one? I don't know, it's in it. So you can set up the external uh, um, effects loop. Yep. Uh, you can insert pedals into it and whatever you want insert into it. Um, IRs, um, so there's two types. I'm not 100% sure what the difference is, but if you use amps in there, you have cabinets mm. and then you have IRs. So maybe cabinets are digitally created cabinets, whereas IRs have uh, actual IRs, impulse responses that they use, recorded impulse responses. You can also you um, import your own IRs through the USB slot in the back. Uh, you can set what the MIDI out does and it's sort of MIDI functionality. Uh, global edits are global settings that you can change. Um, uh, you know, anyway, we'll get into all that sort of stuff later. You can create a bank, change a bank order. So if you have, you know, before we did the banks, you can move it around for set lists and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, create patch order. So you can, you know, when you're using the four patches, for example, down here, you can switch wh whichever way you want them to be. Delay, delete a bank, delete a uh, patch memory, uh, save a patch memory. So patch memory means... Um, 
basically, again, the same sort of thing. We'll get into all that sort of stuff later on. Then you can set a global output, global tempo. You can play around with the tuner. You can get into the, this as well. USB audio, because it's a USB interface, you can do settings for you, you know, all that sort of stuff. You can set MIDI, global MIDI. You can set the pedal. System settings. So system settings is things like, for example, autosave. Uh, if there's any kind of um, firmware updates and that sort of stuff, you can set autosave or uh, get get rid of it. Uh, display how bright you want the display to be, all that sort of stuff. So that's pretty much. I mean, 16 minutes into the video, <laughs> that's that. So there's yeah, a lot of talking, but that's just to show you what it does, right? So next thing I thought we should do is let's find. Let's go the other way. Upwards. Let's go to a completely empty patch. And now, uh, Alex over here. Hello. Uh, I don't know if you've met him before, but this is Alex. Um, he will now. Let's let's make up a patch for you, a setting for sure. you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. This is how, so. Um, there are a bunch of presets, but it's also nice to build your own. Stuff yeah, I mean scratch. presets. I did do a video, a first impressions so, video. Yeah, yeah. And I went through a bunch of presets. You can watch that there. And often they're fun to play with, but it's not actually what you're going to use in a band or a recording. So you want to do your own thing. Yeah. And presets quite often with these things aren't that fantastic. Or they just go crazy. Way overboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy, so, so which are fun to play with, but not yeah. always always practical. So basically, so. basically what it, we, we selected an empty patch. I went into change amp and effects. I find that's the easiest one. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's add an amp. It even has an amp thing there for you. So all you do is you click on it, and here's your list of amps. Okay. Uh, so we have, and we'll go through all that at some stage. We have a uh, Marshall style amps. We have Fender style amps. We have UK thirty, whatever that may be. Uh, BG, which is like could be something that well, if you boogie and stuff uh, <laughs> ecstasy I wonder what that could be a high watt rectifier orange Ooh, um, uh, diesel diesel matchless and then there's a bunch of their own down the bottom like cool. Krampus Redland Velvet Muddy Seventh Heaven Pollux and you've got some bass amps into it maybe we'll do a bass video as well at some stage that could be fun yeah so what kind of an amp would you like um, what was in the middle there was is that what's that one DZ it's a D diesel oh diesel so that's now if you just select an amp, there is no cabinet yet. Yeah, what's well, uh, maybe, maybe so high watt? High watt 100? Okay, so now the thing is so here we've got high watt 100, yep. lights up there. These are the settings so it, you know, that moves, the little light moves along with you. You can turn it on and off with this. There's a little button there dedicated to turning amp on and off with, Sweet. which is kind of cool too. So if you want to use it in a live setting uh, without an amp, mm. Uh, you do that if you want to use the same sounds, but you have an amp, you can just turn it off, which I think is quite good. Like right up the front, you can turn it off. Yeah, if you've got uh, a backline amp for a, a yeah, festival. you want to plug into that. Okay, so we've got the high watt. Now, what we need to do is we need to add a speaker cabinet to it. Yes, please. So let's start off with using their own. So he, these are basically all the effects groups, uh, and we'll use one called cabinet. Let's just start off with that. Uh, oh, and I clicked on modulation by accident, cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, so what would you like? Would you like a 4x12, MS, Marshall stuff, 4x12? Or Ooh. Is there a high watt one? Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a high watt 4x12. Sure. Do you want a high watt 4x12? Just Matching 4x12. Yeah. Now, the other thing you've got to do, which is kind of a s bit weird, mm. but um, it's the same in the smaller zoom pedal, the G1X4, which you can watch really on that here. When you first turn it on, mic is set to off. So if you play it now... Yeah, it's a bit funky. So this is with the cabinet turned off. This is cabinet turned off. And then this is the mic is still off, so you gotta turn the mic on. Look, it's yeah. a bit weird that it's off in my opinion. Why would you have a mic off on a cabinet? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so you gotta that's your rotor encoded and, and then here now you can select different microphones at the moment or, or actually the different blend blending between different microphones you've got a 57 and a 421 mm -hmm. and at the moment it's sort of at 50 50 so if you scroll all the way over to the left it now only uses the 57 That's just a 421. Interesting. And half, half each. Pretty 
cool. So let's just start with that. And you've got a yeah. high pass and a low pass filter as well, which at the moment is just set in the middle. Let's just let's just leave it at that. Sounds good. So we've got an amp. Uh, again, I quite like that you have all the EQ and everything to gain. Yeah. You have it all there. Uh, now, knowing you, you probably want some sort of a reverb or something. Sure. Yes. So let's put that in between the amp and the speaker, shall we? Okay, let's try that. We're like a spring for something. Spring? Okay. So completely original. Oh, absolutely. So let's go reverb. Uh, so do you want... Oh, yeah, you want a spring. Uh, what's F D spring? I think it's a Fender style spring. Ah, sure. Let's try that. Yeah. So that's here now. So you've got two different color settings, colored zero and color one. One's a bit darker. Okay, and then you can bring a mix down a bit. Sure. Cool. Is that all right? It's pretty springy. Okay, what else would you like? Because um, it's pretty clean, maybe a compressor. So right up the front, maybe? Yes. I know why I said like that. Yes, please. Okay, so dynamics. Yes. Do you want a comp, a rack comp? Mm. I think that's the only compressors you've got. Oh, no, Opticomp, Black Opt, <laughs> Limiter 76, <laughs> Dual Comp. Dual Comp, I don't know what that means. But yeah, there's there's two of them. Two, two. <laughs> I'm going to guess there's two. Ah, it's a, a dual band. Dual bands. So you've got a low and high band. Yeah, and then you can you can pick the frequent frequency. What's the um? Who just pick other ones? Sure. Black. Happy? Let's pull it up front a bit. Okie dokie. Yeah. What else would you like? Maybe a drive of some sort? Sure. So after the compressor? Mm. Sure. Yep. Yeah, we'll just try it. And then we can just see how we go. Okay, let's yeah, put one me. after the compressor. Now, uh, drive. Mm. Would you like a TS drive, an EP stomp, an RC boost, a gold drive, a sweet drive, a dynamic drive, a red crunch, a metal world? A TB Mark 1.5, an Octafuzz, a Spot Boost, an Echo Sim, an yeah. NYC Muff, a Hug Thrittle, a, B <laughs> a Big Grit, a Tiss Plus Boost, a Red Cur Plus Bist, a Dist One, a Squeak Up, up. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, you can read it. A Zeno Drive. Sure. Zeno Drive. Why not? <laughs> compressor after after okay let's try that out, Just out of curiosity. so what we can do now is we can go back here and we can change effect order cool. so now we can just take the compressor and drag it after <laughs> Better? Yeah, it's kind of not giving it more dynamics, but be more like touch sensitive. You're going into the drive. Okie dokie. Is there anything else you would like? Uh, what about mad sick delay? Mad sick delay in front of. Let's put it in front of the amp. Sure. Uh, and make it mad sick. Uh, no, 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 delay there. Okay. Would you like tape echo or modulated delay? 
or a ping pong Ooh, delay or ping, a filter delay. Ping pong. Ping pong? Because we're in stereo. We're in stereo. We so. are in stereo, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it's there, and you, you know, uh, another cool thing is it's right on here. The tail you can turn off. So if you play something, it is neat. With tail off at the moment. <laughs> if I turn it off, it kills the delay tails. Mm. If I leave it on, <laughs> it keeps the delay tails. It's right there as well. You can turn it on and off That's right there, which cool. I think is pretty cool. Nice. Um, okay, so is that some? Are you happy with that, or do you want something else? Oh no, it's amazing. I like the color scheme too. It's good. Color scheme's good. It's very pretty. Would you like to now? Mm. Uh, we have one more slot. I mean, we have heaps more slots, but um, oh, some modulation. Modulation. Just, just quickly for fun. Okay, what would you like? Uh, vibrato. Vibrato. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Right, uh, let's add one more effect because then the scroll function comes into play mm. as well. So, cool. what okay. would you like? Um, I've got the basic food groups. How about a wah pedal? Wah pedal. Okay. Yes. So, what we got to do now? We're going to here. We go add effect. Right. Good idea. We tap that. We go to pedal, and you want a black wah or a chrome wah or a wah one hundred. Chrome wah. Chrome wah matches the. Uh, Okay, but now what we've got to do, hang on. So what we've got to do now, because it's right at the end <laughs> of the effects chain, yep. which it, it's probably not the um, uh, perfect place to put it. So let's put that right up the front, I reckon. Sure. Uh, and now... Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, now this is what I wanted to show. That's it. So play by effects board. So now, because we're running out of real estate here, right? Because now we have... Uh, we have the cabinet, which you can turn on and off as a, it's kind of like a pedal. You've got the spring reverb, you've got the delay, vibrato, uh, compressor, drive, and wah. So we're running out of real estate here. But now if we're looking at this, this is the effects board view, which hopefully you can see. And it has this kind of gray box around there. Now scroll, what it does is it shifts that box. So now basically this has become the wah, this is the drive, and it goes all the way to the delay, right? Now if I scroll over, Everything shifts over one, so the wires disappeared, and that's gone to the reverb. If you shift over one more, there's the cabinet. Yeah, Correct. so it's sort of that's a scroll function. Um, so we've got the wire at the front, you can turn it on and off here, but you also have the it's always hard to do it like this. There's a switch under here, you can turn it on and off with the foot switch as well. Mm. So now we have that chrome wire here. <laughs> more range more, let's give it more range more 70s and that's that oh, that's so, amazing i mean that basically so you've got you, you can add as many pedals as you want as long as the processing power is there. So, for example, if we're looking at this, um, hang on, where is it? Add effects. If you look at add effects, mm. we can add an effect. Processing power, we're at 53% at the moment. So we can add a whole bunch more. So you can have a whole huge lineup of things, um, and then you can scroll between it. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it's not that difficult to kind of get your head around it. Cool. Um, so that's basically that. Are you, do you want anything else, or no, is that I'm happy to save that? Happy to save that. Yeah, it's um all the food groups there. Uh, 
Okay, so now if we want to uh, 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 create uh, an, an Alex thing. Yes. Uh, Everyone wants to create an Alex thing. Okay, so we've got <laughs> added, edit patch settings. It's called empty at the moment, but you can go into here. And then you can use this. Through the magic of English language. Yes, call it. Uh, what are you going to call it? Alex. 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 Thing. Alex. Just call it Alex. Okay. Yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Fine. Cool. So we call it Alex. Um, done. Done. We're Alex. This is called Alex now. So we're in patch 102 Alex. Sweet. So you can still turn our effects on and off. And it's ready to go, basically like an analog foot switch board. And stuff. And stuff. So, we should build a sound for you. Quick second sound. I mean, quick. It's not a quick video, but that's just the way things are. So let's build a sound for me. Let's mm. go another empty patch. Yeah. Uh, okay. And yeah. I'm playing my Sorry. rather lovely Fano uh, on this MG6. This is an unboxing video I did for that here, uh, which without anything sounds like this. So this is just going straight through. So I reckon we should do something a little bit more high gainy. Sure. Let's start with the amp again. Oh, oh hang on. So you go. Let's go change effects. I have to go change. Go to the amp. Um, uh, what should I get? What about? I want to use one of their amps. I quite like the Krampus. Krampus. I'm not sure what that is. So now this is without a cabinet. This doesn't sound too bad. So now we got to add yeah there or wherever you go back. Oop. Back. Okay, now, uh, but now instead of using a cabinet, let's use an IR. So if you go to IR, oh, now yeah. there's a whole bunch of theirs. I've, uh, there's some that I've third party ones on there too, right down the bottom. But let's go, I want a 4x12, Oops. not a UK one inch. Um, <laughs> let's go down for the big ones. What about, uh, no, these are the ones that I've brought in already. Let's oh, go, yeah. what about. Uh, KP Room. I think that's the Krampus thing. KP 12 inch. Let's check that out. That's more chugga chugga. Let's go that. And then, so with the IRs, you can't change mics and stuff like that. You can, you have a balance. You can uh, have a dry signal going through as well, which I'm not 100% sure what you want that for. It's kind of fizzy there. Let's do that. And of course, as we all know, a good amp needs to be gained up. That's quite a good rock sound. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, so now let's go... Um, some mad effects going on. Uh, okay, I want... What do I want? A bit of crazy echo, like stereo thing. Okay, dokie. Like, let's put it after, after the eye. After. Oh, oh, let's be wild. Okay, back. Yeah. It just jumps to that other menu. No? And then you got to go down to delay. Yeah. When I want special effects. So I would like... Let's see, filter delay. Filter. <laughs> I always want the tail on. Yep. Because you have to have the tail on. Maybe have it a bit shorter and a bit longer feedback. And maybe mix down a bit. <laughs> Okay. What that goes on for a while. Like okay, a, um, that's cool. Some sort of modulation. No, 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 like no. Like a no, slow, no. phasey thing. I want, I want, There's because there's a setting called special effect. Why does it go to the other menu? The uh, because it's on... Okay, so if you click on that, it's currently in bypass. So it goes to a bypass thing. Ah, I see. And then you've got to go back. It's kind of... It is a little silly, yeah. but... Um, uh, then now. you can go into this. 
Special effects. I don't even know what they are. Hot oh. spice. Hot spice. I don't know what that is, but you need to do that. I think it's like a... Josh, it's like a, a, this sort of bends into a note thing. It's yeah. weird. And then it has this buzz thing as well, which is kind of cool. Maybe you hear it more with a clean amp, but I mean. That has its own kind of gain, but it's a weird gain. Anyway, uh, I like it. It's crazy. It's why. Everyone needs that. Do they? Yes. It's actually a cool sound. I like that. Okay, so that's my special effects. Cool. There's, if you just show, I think I did it in the in the um, the other video too. There's bomber, which is the stupid. It's, just, it's a momentary switch, and you just go. It's just an explosion, if you want that. Uh, but hot spice is pretty cool, yeah. I like that. Okay, let's keep that. Uh, maybe, oh, what I want to do, okay, okay, because there was one of the coolest things in there. Okay, let's change the effect order. Let's move everything up a bit. I want a space. Oh, well, it doesn't, yeah, okay. Well, let's do it, let's do it this way then. Uh, no, where am I? Uh, where are we? Add effect, okay, because I want that after everything. Mm -hmm. There's this crazy reverb, particle reverb, uh, which is wild. Okay, and then we're gonna. Oh, actually, that can be last. Mm -hmm. It's wild, that particle reverb. I like it. Okay. Big thing. Particle reverb, filter delay. Now, let's do a thing where we... Uh, let's add uh, like a boost or something up the front here. Maybe add it up here. Uh, drive. Oh, no, let's add a fuzz. Ooh, octave fuzz. High throttle. Up one octave boot. Just talk, what, 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 oh, yeah. Let's go, okay, let's go, uh, where was the octave fuzz? Octave fuzz. But hang on, that needs then. It's not even mad at all. No. Uh, we need to change the effect order. We need to put that hot spice in front, I reckon. Mm 
That sounds great. I like that. It's fat. This is great, that reverb. I dig that. Ooh, okay. And the other thing I need. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. What everyone needs. Is it? What do you think? Um, a mute function. No. Oh. Pedal pitch. A whammy. Oh. Ah! You can't do it off with those tails. <laughs> That's, that was like a um, like a like an interlude bit of a Steve Vai song. <laughs> yeah. Shoo shoo. <laughs> and then you can set it also so you've got an octave up. You can set it to. Uh, Two octaves down. You can set it to a f like a fourth and a fifth thing, like on the. You know, like 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 on a whammy pedal, and you can have the yeah. detune thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, plus an octave. What, what one trick you do, this is a little trick, this is what I do when I, um, when you do, um, oh, leave it on. when you play solos, yeah, leave, leave, leave it on, leave it on. The thing you do is, when you, like, doing gigs and stuff and it kind of gets boring and the other guys in the band look at, like they're bored, you turn a pedal pitch, like a whammy thing off, you put it somewhere, mm. doesn't matter where, and then you start playing. And as you're playing a solo, you just randomly bring in the... You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it it has a little lag on this one, but if you have it, it's a, if it's an instant thing, you just bring it off every, in every once in a while. It adds these weird notes. I like doing that. Mm, cray cray notes. Cray cray. Uh, so that's that. Should I should I add anything else? Do I need anything else? It's a lot. I need make something wiggly. Let's do. Let's add something wiggly to it. There's one slot I've got here. A bit like a steppy thing. Oh, 99 percent processor. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm taking a wild guess, that the um, the pedal pitch is what makes it 99%. Oh no, it's 95%. So we've maxed it, I guess that particle reverb yeah. and stuff. So we've pretty much maxed it out with this. Well, let's see if I can add anything else. Let's, let's, okay, let's see what else I can add to it and see if it works. You get 5% to play with. Uh, modulation, I want, ah, oh, I want, where, where did I just see that? A ring mod. It's only 2%. Okay, maybe not a ring mod. Um, wow. Ooh, slicer.
I mean, who wouldn't want that? We still have five. We still have a few percent. Let's add. Let's see how. Let's see if we can completely max it out. Sure. Uh, add effect. Let's see what happens. Uh, what else should I add? Uh, delay, reverb, sent and return. Oh, we could add a sent and return thing, but uh, let's add some modulation. And I would like. What about a swell? Well, yeah, I was just gonna say. Vibe. Be but maybe. Oh, hang on. There's a thing there. It probably doesn't work. Oh yeah. Process overflow change effect. Okay, so that's what happens when you go too far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that. I mean it's it's just it's limitless what you can do with it. I mean we went to fairly extreme sort of sounds. Should we very quickly just because we have a third guitar here do a more straightforward sound that's not as crazy, not as cray cray like. with humbuckers. Um, let's go another empty patch, just quickly, right? Um, let's add an amp. What about a Fender Bassman? Sure. And then we want a cabinet. Let's this time, just for the fun of it, uh, let's add a third party IR. So we've used two internal IRs. There's a uh, 4x10 greenback IR. Oh. That's a 4x12. Yeah. Um, uh, Celestian Plus IR. Gain it down slightly more. There we go. Okay, just quickly, right? So let's now, to make something a little bit more normal with a fly, uh, let's add like a boost to that. So for example, let's add a TS, oh, sorry, TS drive. <laughs> Get like an a different boost that isn't mid forward because we've oh, yeah, already got a lot of mid range okay. going on. What about an RC boost? Yes. Cool. That sounds pretty good, actually. Sweet. Uh, let's add. What else should we add to it? Let's add. Um, Let's do something like a chorus. You love chorus. I love chorus. Uh, a stereo chorus. Stereo. More? Yeah. That is gained up. That's off the RC booth. There you go, we've got a chorus. Sweet. Uh, we want... Oh, a tape delay or something. Tape delay. Something a bit classic. Uh, tape echo. Oh, and for example, let's hold it for tap. There you go, that'll do. Um,
Yeah. That actually just added two effects. But it did, it's alright. Yeah, so, um, the drive plus a boost. Drive plus a boost. So, mm. um, I mean, that was just a quick look anyway. I mean, quick. This was a long video. Uh, but, yeah, just a general overlook. We're going to look more into all the different amp types. If there's anything in specific that you want us to do, leave it in the comments below and let us know and we'll try to look into it. There's tons to go through in this thing, so videos are bound to be long. Yep, there's more coming. Uh, stay tuned. If you can hit like and subscribe, we'll let you know when there's a new one coming up. Ding the notification bell. And any comments, questions below, like we said. Yes. Oh, below there's also links to our Facebook, Instagram, and our podcast. Yes. You can check it all there. Where right. we will be talking about this very thing at some stage. Definitely at some stage. So big thank you to the awesome people at Zoom Australia for sending this out to us. And stay tuned for more videos. And thank you for watching.